These are two halves for the bellows that are in the senior 20. Somewhere along the line in building my experimental bellows and reservoir for the busker, I decided I was going to build the senior 20 instead. One difference on this is that this is a row of eight holes. We won't discuss why these two are plugged. And there's a strip of leather that's glued here and goes across here that act as the valves for both the intake and the discharge side of the bellows. I put a piece of tape on here so I didn't get any varnish in the area where I'm going to glue the end of the leather strap down or the leather valve. And after putting two coats of polyurethane, oil-based polyurethane on here, I went back inside with a detail sander and sanded this just to make it glass smooth. Then I want to take an X-Acto knife, and this is a very dull blade, and I'm just going to go around here and just scrape on the inside and remove any little puddles of varnish that remain. And after uh, this was all applied by hand, so I know that method is not terribly precise, I'll just scrape that out of there. Do it on both sides. And then I vacuum that out of there. And I come back with a, a grindstone. And all I'm doing is just removing any possibility of any little bird edges around here that might interrupt the sealing of the leather valve. I put painter's masking tape around the edges on both halves of the bellows and on the area where the, uh, the hinge goes before I put any varnish on here because we need to glue the leather onto these areas and the leather hinges. To my knowledge nothing really sticks to polyurethane varnish so that was a preventive measure. After the polyurethane was dry, I removed the tape, went back and cleaned up these edges to make sure that there's no sharp edges or burrs remaining. When you get ready to assemble this, put the hinges in here and the bellows leather before you start. You want to go in here and make sure this is absolutely 100% clean and dust free. Inside all these holes, you don't want anything floating around in there that's going to keep these uh, flapper valves from sealing completely. And then after it's all done, I would suggest you put it in a plastic bag until you're ready to assemble it in the organ. Two of these go together like this. This gap will be sealed just like on the busker. This is the base of the reservoir, which is attached with leather to the top of the reservoir. Now the connection between the top of the reservoir and the air box has moved to this position. The relief valve is here. And this has a gasket material under it and is screwed to the top of the bellows all the way around the perimeter. When you're getting ready to put the leather on the bellows and on the reservoir, I suggest you go ahead and get some construction paper and make a full-size template of what you're getting ready to cut out. If you're going to use blackout cloth, that's one thing you can draw directly on it, but if you're going to use leather, you're going to have to inspect that leather and make sure there's no holes or thin spots in it, and you'll be positioning this, trying to get it to fit on that piece of leather in the first place. So take the time and go ahead and draw this out full scale. This goes on the reservoir like this, wraps around the sides. You have a little extra here to wrap around the back side. For the bellows, it fits like this. And you have a little bit extra to wrap around the back side on that. You get a depiction or a drawing of what this looks like for the busker plans. You do not get a picture of this in the senior plans. What's shown in the senior plans is how to lay out these card stiffeners that get glued to the inside of the leather. Then you need to draw it out on the cardstock. This would be cut 
and they'll end up being these two pieces. This one will get cut in two, and uh, it'll cut a little gap in there, and that's where that leather folds over. That'll piece them there. Then I clearly mark these B for bellows and R for reservoir. That's the piece that goes in the center there. The next step is to lay out the leather and inspect it on the light table and then position these to take best advantage of a relatively expensive piece of material. I just work that hide all over this table and I look for any thin spots or holes that would indicate that this is going to uh, leak air. This particular skin cost about $55, so it should be a relatively good skin. That being said, if you go to one of the Argon companies and buy a piece of pneumatic leather, I think you'll pay a lot more than $55 for it. Okay, I do not see any holes in that skin, and I do not see any thin spots. That's good. Now this is a very thin skin that I want to use for hinges, and some of the, um, the valve. You can see that's, that's very thin right there. This is thin. That's very thin. There's no hole in it, but it's and thin spots like that. So we'll have to be real careful about what we, what we choose to use out of this. This is very thin in this area. And some obvious thin spots and that would probably leak air. This has turned out very nicely. I got four bellows leathers out of this and one reservoir. And when you lay this out, you're just trying to take advantage wherever you can get these to fit and draw it out on the leather in ink. Take your template, lay it on top of that and make sure that you didn't make a mistake someplace. Whatever you drew on the leather should look very similar to one of these templates. It's well worth the effort and the time to lay these templates out on a piece of construction paper. This is one for the reservoir, and it fits right in there. And on my $20 piece of leather, I got one reservoir leather out of this. I might be able to get three or more pieces of leather for the busker, but the Senior 20 are a little bit larger, so... This was not necessarily the best buy for a piece of leather. This good quality sheepskin. This was uh, nine and a quarter square feet and it worked out quite well for these pieces. I'm ready to put these cardboard stiffeners on our bellows leather. I've already done the one for the reservoir and I've done one for a bellows here. You want to check your cardboard before you go spreading glue. Cardboard goes on there. This leather will stretch a little bit when it gets wet. Piece of cardboard. We're just looking for a gap in between here. That'll be all right. You can put the glue on just the cardboard and stick it on here and hope it stays there. I want to make sure that cardboard stays on there. So I'm going to put glue on the cardboard. I'm going to put glue on the leather. You can go to Columbia, Oregon and get their uh, felt and leather glue. Or you can go to Walmart get the original tacky glue. This stuff's pretty sticky. I've taken an acid brush and I've cut about half the bristles off of that so that's pretty stiff, more like a scrub brush. I'm going to come in here and I try not to get glue across the line. The fold joint of the leather, I want it to stay as flexible as possible. Putting glue in there is only going to make it stiff. This is a piece of particle board. Got a couple of coats of polyurethane oil-based varnish on it. This has worked out pretty well for this. wet paper towel, clean up any excess that squeezes out of here. 
piece of cardboard on here just to keep the top of my table saw clean. We're getting the one side of the leather wet, so it's going to expand. So this is going to cup up a little bit, but eventually it'll dry out and it'll flatten out again. Okay, when you get ready to put these other pieces on, you've got to make sure you pick up the right piece. If you pick up the wrong piece, you try to put it on there, it's going to angle down here in the wrong direction. This is a right angle, that's a right angle, so that's the piece we want right there. bit too much on there that time. In the video, he shows putting a couple of strips of cloth across here to reinforce this edge of the, of the bellows or the reservoir leather. And he doesn't really say why. Uh, that was not shown in the busker. But if you look at how the leather is glued to the cardboard, and if you peel an edge back, then that cardboard will, will separate. So I can only imagine that they've had problems with the flexing right here of this cardboard trying to separate from the leather. And all we're trying to do is put a little clamp around this to help hold this together so that does not become a problem. The problem I have with cutting strips of cloth, you, you can cut it and all that, but then you're going to have all these edges that are going to start fraying, and possibly before you even get it glued down. I found a thinner material, which is in the ribbon section. This is all polyester. It has a, quite a bit of porosity to it, so the glue will go into the fibers on that. And it's thin enough, and the edges are finished so that's not going to fray. So I'm going to put glue along this edge. I'm going to glue it on these three pieces on one side and then fold it. That will be like that. And I put glue on that side, bring it around, push it on there and hold it. Put a couple of clamps on there to hold it for a while. And when you're done, if you flatten that out, then you can see that that cloth is going to push up in there. And that could actually start to pull that cardboard loose. And that's not what we want. So I just release it. That thing's going to sit there like a pup tent. Just leave it alone like that. And next thing we'll do is we'll be installing that into the reservoir or the bellows. We'll spread that glue out to the edge. Don't want to get glue in this center gap where the leather is. I want that leather to remain pliable and flexible. I'm just putting glue on the outside edge of this piece of ribbon. I've glued this just a little bit off center so it hangs down a little bit further this way. And then when I bend that, that cloth going around that corner, that'll come up on this side a little bit. We'll let that dry and then we'll do the other side. One thing I have not mentioned about this cardboard, once you get this glued onto your leather, you want to be real careful, don't get it kinked. Anything that will weaken that cardboard and cause it to uh, 
lose support for the leather or to start delaminating. Now we want to bend this up. I'll put a couple of clamps on here just to help train that leather a little bit. 